Honey bear, lovey bear. The numbers are not working out. We're spending seven grand more a month by you going to the car corrals. And making money. If we're making money, yes, okay. indeed. That's we're good. Giving. By the same time, let's stick to the auctions. Their cars are ready to go. It's less transport back and forth. We also make money on the corrals, and we get rid of cars that we're laid in with, and that works too. You want to go to an auction? I'll go up to North Carolina next week at the auction. You go with me. I do need a vacation. I look forward to it. Spend a few days. In the of house. course. Good. So uh, less car corrals and more auctions. No, both. Uh, I'm bending your way. Bend my way. I'll bend your way. No problem. But you see the numbers. Love you too. Ka-ching. I got a phone in my car and I'm on the run. I know what it takes to be number one. And I'll be riding high when the day is done. I'm just out here having fun. I've been buying, selling, and trading classic cars for 40 years. I work here with my beautiful wife, Robin. We make a great team. Some people call it work, but for us, it's a whole lot more. I'm Ted Vernon, and this is my place, South Beach Classics. Yeah. So this one too has to go. Okay. okay, so you do know it's my first time leaving you guys here. Yes. So you know I'm freaking out. The daily exposure is 275,000 people per day. Sometimes there's 80 people per hour, hour and a half walking through my facility. And there's just so much. It's, it's a severe anxiety leaving it for the first time. I think we should honestly call a meeting. Okay. Let everyone know how serious this is. Let them know the list of things that we have going on. I rounded everybody up. I explained to them what the responsibilities were while I was away. I hope they stick to it. Um, I'm so concerned, but you know what? I've, I've got to leave them. And I'll find out when I get back. Guys, I'm leaving town. Veronica's going to be put in charge here. Um, you guys all know your responsibilities. You all know what you're, I mean, I have nothing to worry about, although I'm freaking out completely. It's my first time ever leaving. It's like leaving a child behind. I'm leaving for an auction to North Carolina with Ted. And you guys are going to be here to run the place by yourself. There's so much responsibility here. You guys might not even realize it, but let me, let me tell you, 80 people per hour walking through this door, I need to make sure clients are safe, I need to make sure things are locked up at night. It's a big place and a lot of responsibilities. And I have faith in you all. New meat. Where'd you find this? What a nice car. I love this, but this is beautiful. Today I brought down to Miami a 1929 Chevy, all original, real nice car, and a 1955 Ford pickup truck street rod, both nice pieces. I would like to get from Ted today something unusual, uh, something a little more uh, valuable than what I brought. How you been? I'm good, I'm good, Phil. What's up, man? Good to see you. Look good. Uh, that's, that's every bit of what you said it was. Interior original? Like Everything on it's original. Wow. Does it run as good as you said? Runs great. I'd rather you started it than me. The old Chevy cranked right up. Man, that's nice. It even has a wind-up windshield. Yeah? A wind-up windshield. Ah. Uh, for ventilation, it winds up? Yeah, that's your air conditioner. Pretty cool. That's your AC. It's really a nice car. Tell me about this. It's a 55 Ford. The, one of the most desirable pickups nowadays. Everybody wants them. What motor? It's a uh, Chevy Caprice running gear underneath it, street rotted. So it's power steering, power brakes, 350 Chevy. All right, let's figure out what you're getting. I know you like unusual, and I got something really unusual. I'll show you, but it's it's uh, a little kinky. Kinky? It'll fit you. I'm gonna show this to you. What do you got? Oh, I like this little black car. It's a 51 Morris. My Morris dad had one when he was... He, he told me about it when he was 12 years old. He used to drive it around while his father wasn't home. He would get in it and drive it around the neighborhood. Uh -huh. And he was bringing it back in the driveway one day. It's and nice he, memory for you. Yeah. You and he can't was bring, have it. He, he was bringing, bringing it back in the driveway one day and bent the door. Check this out. Oh, this is pretty neat. We're using it today. My aunt, my aunt passed. <laughs> it's definitely great. different. Yeah, it's different. It's a wartime car. It worked as an ambulance slash hearse during the war, so it's got a history. How's it run? Runs like brand new. I'm figuring your vehicles. 55 Ford. And the 29, end of the world, a quarter. That's giving you everything. And this is a quarter. You know, or it's damn close to it. It's a nice car, Ted, but I can sell mine separate and ask more when I trade. 
I uh, I like it, and and you're close, but I kind of that's giving me sentimental value for my dad. He used to have one of those little cars. If you throw both of these cars at me, I'll do the deal. I think that's fair. I'm giving you two nice cars. This is a nice car, but that little car there, if you throw that in, I could drive my granddaughter around in it. We could have a good time. You're playing the family card on me? The way this is going to break is that'll be the 29 Chevy, and this will be the 55, <laughs> which makes you winning. You know? It does make you winning. No, How about give me two grand and we're done? Thousand. Done. Thousand bucks. Done. You own them. Okay. Thank you. I was happy with my deal. I had to pay a thousand, but uh, Ted doesn't really know it. I probably would have paid three. I'm happy. I think this will. I'm amazed. I got a granddaddy. It's like somebody likes me today. It's not easy. My goal at this car show I'm going to in Asheville, North Carolina, is to exchange some of these late model trade-ins that I've got virtually nothing in. I can't sell them here, it's not what I do. And I'll turn them into old cars. I gotta give a little bit of greenery to brighten up the scenery sometimes, add a little bit of cash to a deal. As we say in the jargon, call it boot. Gotta give a little boot. Wee! <laughs> Wee! Some guy spent four or $5,000 on these wheels. I don't have four or 500 in a car. So it's a trade-in, it didn't cost me anything. So what I do, is this car, I'll take it up to the show in, in, in Asheville, and it'll do five, 10 grand. These turds are taking a one-way trip to North Carolina. I think it's magical. I'm able to turn these cars that are turds to me into gold. I'll bring back old cars for these lizards. It's a wonderful thing. First day of the Asheville Corral, and I take Robin to see this truck I was looking at earlier. I don't want it, but I bet she thinks she can restore it. This is a 1956 Ford F100. It's got the uh, 292 V8 in it. It was, uh, I believe, the second year it had come out with the V8 in it. Honey, I don't want the truck. It's all rusted. The door's bad on it. That's enough. But you, you know, said two it runs grand a quarter. Well. Runs great. Well, you know, ten all day long we put a paint job on it, and we could sell it for 12 grand. Really hate getting rid of it, but I really, I, I really love this truck. And I, I, I'd love to see this truck when it gets restored. I mean, what type of profit, you know, in business is, is better than half, doubling your money. Yeah, you're right about that. All right, give him, you know, pay him up to three grand or something, make him an offer. Let's go. <sighs> Should you fix it, I'm staying in my office, okay? No problem. Why do you think I have the seven restored at the office? <laughs> really? I don't see him. I don't know. There's something to do. Yeah, good. Buy it. Dwight. Yes. Let's do this thing. I'll give you 2,500. Let's call it a day. No, I can't do. I can't do 2,500. Honey, that's rough. Well, you know what, Tim? Double our money on it. Must be fixing yeah. up in Miami. You talk to Dwight. Dwight, how about three grand? I can't do three, Rob. These, these, no way. I couldn't live with myself for three. It is a first day of the show. Dwight, you're killing me. Dwight, what, where do you have to be? 3,100, Dwight. 31, let's be done. I'll tell you what I'll do. For you, Robin, okay. I'll do it for 32. That works. And look at those blue eyes. Oh, Love God me. almighty. All right, it's a deal. Thank you, man. No, thank you. I think this wouldn't happen if it hadn't been Robin. I want the truck. I don't believe Ted would have, uh, would have come up on his price with that Robin uh, really wanting the truck. I'm completely frustrated with Ted Vernon and, and his theme in which he wants to take all of our inventory to car corrals and trade them off, add money to the, to the package and bring back basically the same thing that we already have. Auctions are so much more efficient. Ted's in and out. We come, we truck the cars back, and they're here for retail. What, what doesn't he get? I think it's worth that. Would retail for 18? 18 to 22? 22, 5. I think this car should be bought for 10, 12 grand. I wish I could just pound it into his mind that, that I've been over the numbers. I've shown him the numbers. He doesn't believe me. The numbers are there. I'm a numbers person. Business is numbers, and he's, he's got to factually get it down straight. 
Big, big three. No big three. Ted is very much a social person. He loves talking. He's got the gift of gab. You know, no one can can devalue that. But unfortunately, it leaves me with a lot of the workload left afterwards. I love coming to these corrals. It gives me a chance to catch up with old friends, meet some new ones, and take a look at some great cars. I just sold one of these. Problem with this car is it's got too many doors. <laughs> too, I, too many. Am I wrong? No, you're right. I'm right. You're asking 15 for this car, right? Right. And that's that's fine. If this car had two doors instead of four doors, what would you ask for? Well, uh, I've got a two door. Right. And it's a $60,000 car. There it is. This is too many doors. But that's 60 grand for this in a two door. That's the difference. That's, you know, that's just, that's just the way collector cars are. Well, actually, it would depend on, on the, Condition. what it was the, the Bonneville, or some of the, like the Bonnevilles go for 150, mm -hmm. you know, on down. It, it just depends. Yeah. The, the perfect show car, and this, and this the two door is, uh, I'd rather have one like this that I can get in and drive. I don't really want every single thing to be perfect. I like this. It's just nice. Thanks for showing it to me. That's what I'm talking about, though. When you look at these cars, too many doors. Too many doors makes it tough to sell. And this guy's got a fair price on his car. He really does. But if it was a two-door, as you said, it would be 60. Hell of a difference. This guy Sonny's coming over that I want to trade with, and I'm really looking to do a deal. The weather's, I don't know how much longer it's going to hold out, and I want to do business, and he will trade every time. Well, in most cases, we if we trade, we trade within 20, 30 minutes on the handshake, and then, but we'll probably trade pretty close. We'll probably trade two for two. I, I don't even try to analyze that man. He ain't right. Probably, probably ask 25, and. He'll probably offer 15 and settle for two. That's normally the way it works. Hey, Sonny. How you doing, son? Ted, your cars? Yeah. They may be yours soon. OK. Still buy one, get one free, or similar to that? <laughs> Some things never change. Yeah. I'd like uh, to have the best thing you've got for the least amount of money. Can you pull them out? Well, the way I feel is it's your turn to pay me, <laughs> oh. first of all. Oh, okay. I don't think I've ever gotten money out of you. You almost did a couple of times. Once, yeah. about eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. What do you got? Got a Corvette in the truck here. Just have to come check them, see what you think. Corvette's got good paint, good tires. Interior. To import, that's 85, yeah. 86? Yeah, yeah. 1982 was the last year for the C3 Corvette. And then in 83, they didn't sell vets. They came out with an 84 Corvette, which is the C4, in 1984. Totally different, so they, they retooled and they lost a year. And uh, 84 was a really bad car. Uh, 85, they got a tune port. It's not the Crossfire, which they had in 84, which was hideous. And uh, these cars are a lot better, and they sell. It's a good, decent old car. It's never been in Florida, but it's always wanted to go. <laughs> and the C10 is yours? Yeah, C10. It's been lowered a little and got a nice chrome engine. Billet grill. Yeah, stuff like that probably. 350? Yeah, 350 engine. And drive them just a good work and drive oh, them? Oh, yeah, up. yeah. I think the vet at my store will do $8,500, which is fine. And if it does a little less, that's fine too. Figure yeah. the Audi for this yeah. and the truck for the Corvette. That truck's probably a $6,500 truck, and that's fine too. You know, it's, it, the deal works. Uh, I'm going to have to come his way a little bit, but that's fair, too. You know, as long as it's fair, I'm cool with it. That yeah, works. The only thing about the Audi, I can't spell those letters good. Have you got anything I can spell or pronounce better than Audi? But for boot, I could do a whole lot. You think you got money coming on this deal? I was hoping so. What do you think? It's hard to believe, isn't it? 
Well, I think I'm in, in, in being serious with you, I think this is worth a little bit more than the Audi. And I think the, the vet is worth at least as much as the truck. I think honestly, I think I'd throw you about a, I guess I'd give you a thousand. Well, see, your wife couldn't ride the truck. She couldn't get in it, and I can't put a coon box in a Corvette. So I was thinking 25. It's hard to believe. You know, you're a very complicated guy. Yeah, sometimes I can't believe it myself. 1,500 and the deal's done. I'm thinking 22. 1,500 and it's done. 2,000. Why are you shaking my head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're listening. Two grand, it's over with. See right. how easy that was? Sonny's picked two cars that work for me. He's picked this truck. It's a big block old 4x4 truck. And he picked this little Audi I've got here that I hate. And uh, it gets me out of a mistake, which the Audi was. And the truck's a good truck, and the vet's a good vet. Yeah, I basically think I won today. By getting the two grand and we compromised, I got what I came after. I just hope that we both make money in the end. But I'm satisfied with the deal. Driving around the corral, and I spot some wheels that would be perfect for a Cobra back in Miami. I gotta have these wheels. Tires look like my head. Hey, I, I'll say they do match. All right, guys. <laughs> I'll pay a buck and a half, $150 cash, and I'm good. How about 180 How about stop busting my chops? I honestly think the, the Mustang wheels, I think they're worth 150. That's, the tires are bald. I gotta bust them down. I gotta get new ones. How'd I meet you in the middle? Is that 165? That's what that is. That's the middle. Yes. How about 150 and I'll pay you? Okay, we'll make Good. it. Appreciate you. Before I have a heart attack. Hi, how are you? How neat. Good, how are you? Good. Ted's got another deal for me to work on for him. Um, I don't mind helping, but I do mind that it's a rat rod. So let me see what I can do. It's a 1964 Chevy Bel Air wagon rat rod. Even if I get it for $3,000, what could I possibly retail the wagon for at the end of the day? The profit margin is, is not there in this deal. You know, I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of itchy. I don't know how to think about that. I usually don't deal with women on their cars, but uh, uh, we'll give it a shot. So rat rod, how long you've, how long you've had it? I've had it since about April. Okay, April. What, what year is this wagon? This is a 1964 Bel Air. Okay. Uh, it's got a fresh uh, small block Chevrolet motor in it, a fresh transmission. The seats have been redone, so they are nice and comfortable. Uh, she don't look nice. like much on the outside, but she is beautiful on the inside. I'm not very fond of, of rat rods. Now, is this a rat rod, or is it actually a car that just needs to be painted? What, what, where do you draw the line with the It could be rods? both. You probably think it's a car that needs to be painted, and I think of it as a rat rod. A rat rod. rod, okay. Each individual, each person, old people don't like this stuff. They think it's junk. <laughs> You're saving it from the crusher. A lot of people would have crushed that car, and I mean, that car has a lot more life left in it. You know, I see that you're asking 6,500. The highest I would go would be 2,500. Ooh. There's some no, modifications I, I that are then retailing. Close to that. I mean, I really love that car. Robin's a tough negotiator. Uh, I've been messing with cars long enough, she ain't hurt my feelings yet. For me, this car really isn't a rat rod. Um, it, it needs too much. For me, it's just another restoration project, and right now, I'm, I'm, I can't take another project. I'm just too busy. It only takes one person to fit behind the steering wheel in any vehicle. And sooner or later, somebody will come through. Best of both worlds. I get to play with cars, and I got my beautiful wife here. So, honey, I can tell you've been out in the sun. You've got some beautiful color on you. Yeah. Did you leave any cars out in the field for anybody else? No. I got rid of the, the black truck. I got rid of, and I got rid of that hideous Audi. <laughs> I got rid of the Camaro, and I got rid of the Jeep, which I had no use for. I did a deal with Old Sonny. I gave him that uh, big block truck for an '85 Corvette. '85 Corvette, but I I thought those aren't desirable. 
No, but they're a whole lot more desirable than that big truck, that gas heater. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm happy about it. I know the office isn't going to run very well for a couple days. I'm a little selfish. I know the, the magic that you can do up here anyway. We'll put it back together when you get home. I can't, you know, your gargoyles no, are No, honey, I agree with you. You pried me out of the office. I did not want to come here, but just getting away and coming to the fresh air here in Asheville, North Carolina has really been refreshing. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yep. It really is. So whatever it is we can handle when we get back, I'm sure. Honey, some shows are great trading shows, and some shows are great buying shows, and some shows are great selling shows. This was a great buying show, and this was a real good trading show. So we're coming home with like 16 new cars, which I think is great. I agree with you 110%, sweetheart, but I've got one question for you. Where is this vacation I was promised? Get in the car. Let's go, I'm ready. Let's go. We got a bunch of cars at the auction and made some great deals. Now it's time for the rubber to hit the road and start our vacation. <laughs>